This video was brought to you by the TLDR socials. Get more from TLDR by following us on Instagram and Twitter where we post explainers that never make it to YouTube. The link is down below. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at why nuclear power is the solution to the global energy crisis and how the fact that policymakers are realising this might be a silver lining to the otherwise miserable uptick in energy prices. So we're going to structure this video into four parts. First, we're going to have a look at the causes of the current energy crisis. Second, we're going to have a look at how the energy crisis has inspired different responses from commentators on either side of the political aisle. Third, we're going to have a look at why neither of these responses are quite adequate and why nuclear power is probably one of the best ways to protect against similar energy crises in the future. And fourth, we're going to have a look at how this energy crisis has forced policymakers, especially in Europe, into taking another look at nuclear power. So let's start with the causes of the energy crisis. There were lots of contributing factors here, but broadly there were two main reasons. A sudden jump in oil and coal prices, meaning less oil and coal energy generation, and renewables weren't able to fill the gap left. Let's start with the jump in fossil fuel prices. Coal and gas prices went up for a whole load of reasons. A post-pandemic demand spike, an unusually cold winter in the Northern Hemisphere, Hurricane Ida in the Gulf of Mexico, but they were at least exacerbated by the efforts from governments around the world to go green. In accordance with its green ambitions, China has reduced its coal production by 10%, from 352 million tonnes in December to 314 million tonnes in July. Similarly, in 2020, the EU production of hard coal was just 56 million tonnes, 80% less than the 277 million tonnes produced in 1990. On to the second reason, renewables' inability to fill the gap left by coal and gas. Essentially, the energy crisis, especially in Europe, has been and is being exacerbated by the fact that the preeminent source of renewable energy, solar and wind, aren't running at full capacity. This is because, well, it hasn't really been very sunny or windy recently. In 2020, for example, wind provided 25% of the UK's total energy mix. Today, it's down to just 7%, thanks to slower than usual winds. Similarly, in Germany, wind power accounted for just 21% of electricity generation in the first half of the year, down from 28% in the second half of 2020. Now, this didn't come as a total surprise to energy commentators, who've been warning about this for years. Wind and solar are cheap and popular renewable energy sources, but they're unreliable, because, well, when the sun's not shining or the wind's not blowing, they don't work. This means you need a so-called baseload energy source, a reliable energy source that can fill the gap when solar and wind aren't working. This is why so far it's been relatively easy for Western governments to go green. They just put more solar and wind on the grid and use natural gas as their baseload energy. Things will get harder in the future because governments will need to think about replacing their natural gas or coal with a renewable baseload energy source, like nuclear or hydropower. So, on to the second part of this video, how different political commentators have interpreted this energy crisis. Analysts on the left of the political spectrum have suggested that this energy crisis proves that we can no longer rely on fossil fuels. As the world weans itself off fossil fuels, price volatility will only become more common. So, if we don't move to renewables quickly, we'll just end up stuck in crisis after crisis after crisis. Analysts on the more climate sceptic end of the aisle reject this and argue this would end up costing the public even more than the current crisis. They suggest that this energy crisis is proof that governments have been overzealous in implementing their green agenda and that if governments had maintained domestic coal production and hadn't invested in those unreliable renewables, we wouldn't be in this mess. Both sides have a point here. It's true that replacing the whole grid with wind and solar would be very expensive, because you'd need some pretty expensive and futuristic batteries to store the energy for when there's no sun or wind. Nonetheless, while a return to fossil fuels might make more financial sense in the short term, it ignores the political and environmental reality that fossil fuels are warming the planet and will be ever more tightly regulated in the future. So, on to the third part of this video, why nuclear is a solution. Nuclear power is the middle way here because it solves renewables baseload problem without contributing to climate change. This was actually very much apparent in the current energy crisis. As the rest of Europe ran out of energy, they started desperately relying on France, which derives about 70% of its electricity from nuclear energy. 
Throughout the crisis, France has been exporting about 8 gigawatts of energy to its European neighbours. For context, that's about 10% of the UK's entire energy capacity. Interestingly, the reason France has so many nuclear reactors is because, in response to the oil crisis of 1973, in 1974 France went all in on nuclear energy with the Mesmer Plan, named after the then Prime Minister Pierre Mesmer. The point is that France is currently keeping prices low and lights on for its European neighbours. France is part of the EU's internal energy market and its single day ahead coupling mechanism, which means that it basically has to share its energy with anybody else, which is why costs have gone up for the French as well, although France's costs are a bit lower than the current EU average. Sometimes analysts on the left reject nuclear power as being too expensive and argue that it would actually be cheaper to invest in wind and solar, combined with some sort of clever battery technology, say using electric vehicles connected to the grid as a battery system to store excess energy and distribute it when needed. There are two things to say here. First, while there are some innovative ways of dealing with irregular energy generation, they're not yet proven at scale and are often still pretty expensive. Second, nuclear power doesn't need to be expensive. Obviously, it can be. In the UK, nuclear power costs about $8 billion per gigawatt, and in the US it can run up to $12 billion. For context, China currently builds nuclear power at about $2 billion per gigawatt, as does South Korea, thanks to a standardised design programme. Nonetheless, it doesn't have to be. After all, France has some of the cheapest electricity in Europe, the reason it's so expensive in the US and UK is that it's over-regulated. This might sound silly, how can something as dangerous as nuclear power be over-regulated? But nuclear power in the UK and US has to basically be zero risk, because the public are so wary of it. This makes it insanely expensive because the cost of risk is exponential. What we mean by this is that it costs relatively little to get to 10% risk, loads more to get to 0.1% risk, and a near infinite amount to get to zero risk. Which is why we don't expect anything to be zero risk. For example, we could introduce a nationwide speed limit of 15 miles an hour to bring the risk of fatal road accidents down to zero, but this is clearly a wild idea because it would be immensely costly. Instead, we accept that the current system risks fatal accidents, but that that's better than the alternative. We should think similarly about nuclear power. We need to relax prohibitively costly regulations on nuclear power because the alternative, planet warming fossil fuels and climate crises, is a lot worse. So, on to the fourth section of the video, how the energy crisis has actually forced policymakers to consider nuclear power. In response to the energy crisis, France, Finland, Poland, Hungary and the Czech Republic started lobbying the EU to categorise nuclear power as sustainable. The UK announced a nuclear-centric programme to decarbonise their grid by 2035, and France announced plans to develop commercially viable modular mini-reactors by 2030. As happened after the oil crisis in the 1970s, today's energy crisis is demonstrating that decarbonisation requires a baseload power source, and for many countries, nuclear seems to be their best bet. Anyway, what do you think? Is nuclear power the best way out of the energy crisis, or is there another solution to the baseload problem? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. Also, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram for more TLDR content. You can follow just the TLDR UK socials, or just go wild and follow whichever TLDR accounts interest you. Anyway, following and sharing our posts not only gets you more from us, but it really helps us out, so thanks a lot. And of course, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified whenever we post a video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible, and if you want to see your name at the end of videos, you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is down below.